promise me you won't make these 78 mistakes tomorrow. We are rapidly running out of time to get ready for A-level chemistry paper one. And if you don't know it by now, you're probably best off just watching this two hour video covering everything. But even if you can't learn any new stuff, you can make sure you're not making these really silly mistakes. So here are my top 78 for tomorrow's A-level chemistry paper one. One, 4S fills first, but it also empties. Two, copper and chromium take an electron out of 4S so that they have five or 10 in their 3D. Three, don't forget state symbols on ionization enthalpies. Four, electrospray is when you dissolve stuff in a polar solvent and it picks up a proton, and electron impact is when you use high energy electrons to knock an electron off. Five, don't forget that speed is distance divided by time. Six, for mass spec questions, remember that the mass has to be in kilograms. Seven, remember to use Avogadro's constant to get the mass of one ion, not one mole. Eight, if you're calculating relative atomic mass, watch out if they've given you an absolute abundance rather than relative abundance. Nine, make sure that AR is always to one decimal place. 10. If you're going backwards and figuring out the mass number of an isotope, it has to be an integer. 11. Get your units right for using the ideal gas equation. 12. For required practical 1, remember it's a volumetric flask. 13. Don't forget to weigh after you've added your solute to the beaker so you know how much you've actually transferred. 14. Make sure that your rinsings are done with distilled water and that they make it into the flask too. 15. Invert your volumetric flask at the end, not the start. For the titration, rinse the burette with the solution that it's eventually going to be filled with. 17. If it's got metal in it, it's not a molecule. 18. A molecule only has hydrogen bonds if it has hydrogen and fluorine or oxygen or nitrogen bonded to each other. 19. Van der Waals forces can be stronger than hydrogen bonds if they're on a much bigger molecule. 20. Ionic compounds don't have delocalised electrons. 21. Be really careful coming up with your formulae for ionic compounds. Actually think about what group things are in. 22. For shapes, use all of the electrons to figure out the shape and then just the bonding pairs to name. 23. A molecule can have polar bonds but not be a polar molecule if it's symmetrical. 24. All of those standard enthalpies are for one mole. 25. When you're thinking formation, all reactants and products in their standard states, not just everything. 26. Standard enthalpy of combustion is not under standard conditions. It's on fire! 27. When you're using Q equals MC delta T, it's the mass of whatever is changing. So if you're doing flame calorimetry, it's the water, not the fuel. 28. When you're working out delta H, you need to take your energy value and divide it by a thousand to put it into kilojoules. 29. That second required practical, you cannot use the washing method. 30. Mean bond enthalpy is averaged out over a range of compounds or molecules. 31. KC expressions need square brackets because it's concentration. 32. After you do your ice table, don't forget to go from moles back to concentration before you put the values in. 33. Remember that KC doesn't have standard units. You need to use your expression to figure it out. 34. When you're doing oxidation states, watch out for peroxides. Those are molecules with oxygen single bonded to oxygen. 35. Watch out for hydrides when hydrogen is bonded to a metal because then it will be minus one instead of plus one. 36. Remember that an oxidizing agent is reduced and a reducing agent is oxidized. 37. When you're talking about periodicity and first ionization enthalpies, when you start talking about um, electrons pairing in orbitals, they're repelling each other more strongly, not just starting to repel. Watch out for questions that ask you to compare the ionic radius of isoelectric ions, say potassium and chloride, where they've both got the same electron configuration, but potassium has more protons, so it's actually small. Remember when you're talking about electronegativity that it's the bonding electrons that are important. In thermodynamics, remember that all of those equations need state symbols. And 41, they also need the electron. So make sure you don't lose any electrons halfway through your Born harvest. 42. Your standard enthalpy of lattice formation is going to be more exothermic when the ions are smaller and more highly charged. And 43. Standard enthalpy of lattice formation is different to formation. Formation is from the constituent elements in their standard state, and lattice formation is from gaseous ions. 44. Remember when you're calculating Gibbs free energy that your entropy is going to have joules in it, but your enthalpy will have kilojoules, so you need to convert one of them, usually the entropy. For KP expressions, don't forget that you cannot use square brackets, either round brackets or no brackets at all, and then either one or two Ps. 46. Like KC, it's not going to have standard units. You need to look at the equation. 47. When you're using um, reduction potentials to put them together to make an electrochemical cell, you're going to flip the less positive equation. 48. Those equations are always given as reduction potentials, but remember that the lithium one that's in your spec is given as it is in a lithium cell. 
49, everything is compared to the standard hydrogen electrode, which is going to have one mole per decimeter cubed of the source of hydrogen ions like hydrochloric acid and one atmosphere of hydrogen gas and then platinum black as the reaction surface. If the EMF for a cell is over zero, then that tells you that that reaction would also be feasible as a chemical reaction. Fuel cells carry out the electrochemical oxidation of a fuel, you're not actually setting fire to it. And 52, remember that the electrodes, you need to name them in terms of oxidation at the anode and reduction at the cathode. Don't start talking about panic, it's for electrolysis, it's for GCSE, totally forget it exists. 53, make sure that you know your different definitions for acids based on whether it's Arrhenius, Bronsted, Lowry or Lewis. 54. If the question says define pH, they mean give them the equation. pH equals negative log base 10 of the hydrogen ion concentration. 55. If you're trying to work out the pH of something using Kw, you can only square root it if it's water. 56. Kw is only 1 times 10 to the minus 14 at 298 Kelvin. So you can't use the pH is 14 take pOH unless it's 298 Kelvin. 57. Buffers are solutions that will resist pH changes when a small amount of acid or base is added. 58. In all your buffer calculations, make sure you're converting back to concentration and not just leaving numbers as moles. 59. When you're drawing a titration curve for, say, a weak acid where you've added a strong base, don't forget that at the very start it will go up quite sharply before it starts buffering and then flatten out. Number 60, to pick the most appropriate indicator, you need something that is going to change colour during the vertical bit of your titration curve. 61, if you're not using the right indicator, then the equivalence point and the end point won't be the same. Bonus one, neutral is where the hydrogen ion concentration is equal to the hydroxide ion concentration, which may not be at pH 7 if the temperature is not 298 Kelvin. 62, metal oxides are basic and non-metal oxides are acidic. 63, um, aluminium oxide is amphoteric, so it can go both ways. 64. When magnesium reacts with water, it always makes hydrogen, but sometimes it makes magnesium oxide if it's steam, and sometimes it makes magnesium hydroxide if it's cold water. 65. Transition metals can have an incomplete D subshell in either their atom or their iron. 66. When you're drawing a complex iron with a transition metal, the charge goes on the outside of the iron, it doesn't go on the central metal. 67. Make sure you've got square brackets around the whole complex. 68. To act as a ligand, a molecule or an ion needs to have a lone pair that it's able to donate. 69. When chloride ions replace water molecules, they're bigger, and so you can only fit four of them, whereas you could have six water molecules acting as ligands in a hexa-aqua ion. 70. When you first start adding dilute ammonia, you basically do the same thing as if you added hydroxide ions, because the ammonia molecules take a hydrogen away from a water and leave you with hydroxide, and basically the same thing happens. But 71, even if you start adding concentrated ammonia, you're only going to have a partial substitution. So at most, you're going to get four ammonia ligands and then two waters remain. 72, you need to know that EDTA has its lone pairs on the nitrogens and on the oxygens that have the lone pair, not the double bonded one. 73, look out for cis-trans isomerism with your monodentate ligands and um, optical isomerism with your bidentate ligands. 74. The chelate effect means that EDTA is always going to be able to displace other ligands because it's going to increase the entropy. 75. If you're using a colour emitter to figure out the concentration of a transition metal ion, then you're going to need to make a calibration curve before you start. 76. Transition metals make good catalysts because they're able to form very weak temporary bonds by using their 4S and 3D subshells. 77. When those catalysts take hold of a reactant molecule, that is called adsorbing with a D, not absorbing with a B, because it's not going inside the metal, it's just on the surface. And 78. Transition metal ions with a 3 plus charge as opposed to a 2 plus charge are better able to act as acids, and that means that when they react with carbonates, you don't make a metal carbonate, you make carbon dioxide and water and a salt. So hopefully now you won't make any of those mistakes tomorrow.